Welcome everyone to a new companion series to my WebGL um, tutorial series. This one's going to be more focused on the WebGPU API, which is kind of brand new and it's still being developed. It's kind of cutting edge, bleeding edge type of tech. So everything is not exactly working and a lot of features are missing and things like that. So since it's cutting edge and it just kind of been enabled in, into the Chrome browser, it's time to start playing around with it. So one of the first things you really need to do for, for this is to download Chrome Canary. So you'll, I'll show you the link um, in the description. So all you gotta do is download the new, uh, just an experimental version of Chrome. So this way you can access all the new, new features. And once you have it downloaded, all you gotta do is access um, the Chrome flags. Um, so that's all you gotta do, just put that in your in the tab browser and off you go. And you it takes you to this page and all you gotta do is turn it on. I, I and just ignored the unsafe part. As long as you're not gonna use this browse, version of the browser to web surf, you're fine. Just use it for development and, and you don't have to worry about anything. Um, <clears throat> so what's this series about? The series is about learning the brand new API because it's gonna be the future of 3D graphics on the web. And um, the way API is is not being designed like how OpenGL was. OpenGL was modeled after OpenGS uh, 3.0 ES edition, which is something that's the graphics API for like Android mobile devices. Um, I think, uh, think I think uh, you can also do the same thing on uh, iOS. Uh, this one is not. It's going to be modeled after the main three desktop modern APIs. We have Vulkan, we have Apple's Metal, and we have... Um, Microsoft's Direct, DirectX 12. A lot of them follow the same kind of concepts. It's a, it's multi-threaded instead of being single-threaded like OpenGL was. So it's multi-threaded so you can actually use more of your CPU to kind of start managing how to push data to the GPU. And um, on top of that, it um, it has a lot of extra new features. Uh, one, one such feature is kind of like uh, compute shaders. Um, other sh other fun functionality will not be included into WebGPU, um, like um, geometry shaders and can't say it right, telesense shaders. Um, those will not be included because me uh, Metal does not support them at all. So it so it's being developed kind of like the lowest common denominator. So since Metal has the least amount of GPU uh, features, so WebGPU will have. <laughs> pretty much as much as Apple Metal does. Um, certain things don't ex don't actually work anymore, like um, uh, pixel sprites don't work anymore in WebGPU because actually nothing except for Vulkan supports pixel sprites. Uh, not pixel sprites, us. Uh, um, uh, point sprites, sorry. Point sprites. Uh, if, you, if you're used to my series, I abuse the hell out of point sprites in a lot of my stuff. So it's kind of sad that that no longer exists. You kind of have to do other things like kind of like um, you have to do a quads, and then do instancing. You kind of have to build your own um, point sprites now in the web GPU. So you actually actually have a lot, lot less of those nice little tiny bit of features. Um, it's a little bit more verbose, and there's a lot more managing the the GPU than before. Um, everything is very fine grain. Um, where WebGL, you kind of get your own frame buffer with the death buffer set up, and everything's all co copacetic, and you got anti-aliasing right away. WebGPU does not give you any of that. You have to set up your 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 frame buffer, and then you have to set up your depth buffer, and you don't get you don't get anti-aliasing to, to start with at all. So it's very rough. It's very bare bones as you get, and and that's really the whole point of WebGPU is to kind of get rid of that clutter and kind of really get get close to the metal as possible, and to to just to increase performance. So that's really the whole gist of WebGPU, and um, it's really just a performance, and it's a more modern API. Like I said, it's multi-threaded. And for this series, the, mo the main focus is to build a project. Like, the best way to learn is building a project, and our project is going to be to try to create uh, a nice framework or um, abstract layer that allows us to actually use WebGL and WebGPU at the same time. So we can kind of, like, say, okay, we want a mesh. We want it to be in this location. Render it. And depending if we turn on WebGL or turn on WebGPU, it'll just render to that specific uh, API. So we want to create like a framework that actually supports multi APIs because in the future, we can take this as a nice example to do like WebAssembly and then using desktop. So if we re rewrite everything in like Rust, 
we can then use WebAssembly to bring Rust back into the web and then access WebGL and WebGPU. And then since Rust is a, de can, is a desktop um, programming language, we can then extend our um, f uh, uh, framework to actually do Vulkan and DirectX and everything else. So this is really kind of like real the, the big focus of this series as opposed to my WebGL series, which is really focused on game engine. This is more like the structural design of building something that can actually do multiple APIs. So not no so much as like using voxels and and you know uh, trying to do shaders. We're not trying to do anything complicated with web GPUs. It's just really how do we learn the API and how can we use it with everything else that's available to us. And the main goal at the very end of the series, like if I would like the final episode or video, would be just to have an ar a skinned armature uh, like mesh doing like a walk cycle. So we're bringing back Vegeta from my WebGL series and we'll have him walking in a 3D space with WebGPU. And that will basically be like a very complicated system to see if we can get it working on both WebGL and WebGPU at the exact same time. Um, and if you've watching, been watching my series, you know this, this armature stuff has been something I've been working on for over a year now and we've have we've ironed out every little bug that we we've encountered so we can definitely do it we just have to learn the web gpu api and learn how to write shaders for it and everything else and um you know just figure out how to manage the data and, and render multiple objects so that's the big gist of what this series is about and i hope you're like excited as i am to learn about it so i'm going to end this here this is the end of the intro and then the next video will be the first video we'll actually start looking at some code and like i said i'm going to show you both the 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 web gpu and the webgl version of the exact same code so this way you get if you're a webgl user uh, or someone learning we're going to transfer that knowledge over uh, if you're a new user, you're going to get lost. So if you're in web, web GPU is not necessarily good for new users to graphics programming. So you might want to maybe check out my WebGL series, which starts at the very, very bare bones beginning and actually explains everything from the from bottom up. Uh, the web GPU series will not be for beginners. It'll be more for intermediate users of graphics programming, uh, you know, especially in the field of WebGL APIs. And then I don't mean like 3JS or anything. I'm actually meant the actual raw APIs that you have to co connect with the browser. No, no libraries, just directly browser um, communications to the GPU. So, so please like and subscribe and click that little bell thing if you're really interested about this series and you want to be uploaded when I have new videos up. So. Uh, that's it, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll actually start looking at some search code. Thanks, thanks for watching.